Now, good morning everyone. You are very welcome to Farming Through the Seasons. So today I'm going to introduce you to a dairy farmer. His name is Shane and he is going to tell you all about what is happening on his farm this week in the season of autumn. So autumn is a very busy time for farmers and they have to prepare themselves for winter so they're making sure that sheds are ready. As a dairy farmer they're still of course milking some of the cows um, and Shane will take over in a few minutes to show you all what's going on on his farm this week. But before we get started, I just want to have a little look at our participants and see if we can say hello. So any classes out there, if your teacher wants to write into the Q&A box, you can say hello and let us know who's here. So I can see your teacher's names, but I can't see which classes are present. So if you want to let me know in the Q&A box and we can say hello to each other. Now let's have a little look who's here. We have second class from Mulla. Hi second class, how are you doing? Fifth and sixth class from Lanesboro Primary School in County Longford. Very good, you're welcome everybody. We have Ballymana National School and that's third class. Hi everyone. St. Aidan's Primary School in Enniscorthy, so that's Mr. Doyle's sixth class. Brilliant. We have an excellent mix of pupils here today. We have junior and senior infants from Skull on Balia Nua in Waterford. Hello, everyone. So Shane is going to be zooming in from Waterford as well. Who else do we have? Lots of people saying hello. We have second class from Rail Namara, which is in Donna Kearney. And we have another class coming in from Waterford, very good. Now, so we will get a chance to, to say hello to a few more of you later on when we open the Q&A. But for now, I'm going to introduce you to Shane. So Shane, if you want to pop on your camera and you can unmute yourself and you can say hello to the pupils in their classrooms. Hello, everyone. So this is Shane. So Shane is a dairy farmer and he's all the way in Waterford. So I'm going to hand over to Shane now and I'll just spotlight his video so he is up on your screen. Now, there we go, Shane, you can you can take it away from there. Hi, everyone. So I'm, I'm in the shed today. As you can see, it's it's autumn time. So the weather is starting to change. We've had a, a wet morning here in, in East Waterford. So I'm from from Port Law in County Waterford. So it wouldn't be too far from Waterford City. I see a few local schools, I think. Um, Newtown is there and I think maybe Port Law is there and there's there's a few more from around West Walford as well. So but for, for those that don't um know me or don't know the farm, we're dairy farming here. We're milking 215 cows, we're spring calving farm. So that's important because as I explain later in the springtime, all our cows are calving, so then we, we don't milk them during um December. And we dry them up for a few weeks, just give us a break and give the cows a break. You can probably hear the machinery going in the background. You can try to change it. That's my my dad is there. He's busy working away. Um, so my dad's name is John. And then my girlfriend Kate also works on the farm as well. So we have we have three of us here full time. And then also actually I'll show you as well the three other workers on the farm. They're here lighting the straw out of the rain. So that's Brandy. Say hello to Brandy. <laughs> hey Brandy. And then we have Daisy here. Is our sheep dog, and then we have Lily up here as well, the pup. So they're great help on the farm. They love helping us out with the cows and and the calves. But they're taking a break this morning when the weather's a bit wet. You can see the the puddles outside. So it is. It's getting pretty pretty wet and cold. So that's why I'm, I'm all wrapped up this morning. So basically, just to explain a bit what's happening this week on the farm. So the big, I suppose. Um, work on at the moment is spreading slurry. So for those of you, I'm sure you know what slurry is. Um, if you come from a country school, maybe the, some of the, the urban schools might know as much, but you see the slurry tanks on the road and the tractors holding up the traffic. So all the farmers are under pressure to get slurry out onto the fields because all the tanks are all full. So that's all gathered up throughout the, throughout the summer months and, and into the autumn. And we have to spread that on the fields before the deadline of, of Saturday, which is tomorrow. So that's one job we're doing at the moment is to 
is to make sure we get our, our story out in time because we're not allowed to spread it after that date and then we're not allowed to spread it again until the 12th of January in, in Waterford. So it's important that we, we get them emptied out because we don't want all our tanks filling up through the winter time when the cows are indoors, it fills up with water and all the cows waste and everything fills into these tanks, which are, which are all under my feet here, they're all under the ground. So it's important that we get that job done. Also another job we're doing at the moment as well, we're, we were um, dosing our calves. So when calves are, are basically at pasture, so they're only born in the last springtime, they're very young. So they need, they need to be dosed for worms and parasites. They can pick up different bugs in the grass. So we have to basically give them their medicine to make sure that all the, the worms are, are killed and it doesn't affect their, their growth and they don't get sick. So what we do is we take samples from the calves and we make sure then whether they have worms or not, because we don't want to be just giving them medicines if they're not sick, because as, some, as the teachers will definitely be aware of there is issues coming down the line with antimicrobial resistance. And we have to be very careful with the medicines and treatments that we give to our animals now. So we'll only give um, doses or vaccinations or treatments to calves and animals that are actually sick or needed. So we test them and see, do they have worms? And if they have worms, we give them their, their treatment. So our calves, do have some worms just to pick them up in the pasture. So we do need to, to give them some treatment. And my seven Kate done that yesterday. So they should be nice and healthy now for the next few weeks till they come inside in the winter time, they'll be coming in for housing. So at the moment they're still at grass and they're they're happy they're happy out of grass now as well. There's plenty of grass and they don't mind this this weather at the moment. They're they're strong and they're they're healthy, so they're thriving. And then the the other job at the moment then, which I'll be doing this evening is Amy mentioned as well that we'll be drying off cows um, over the next few weeks. So when they're spring calving, cows need a break for a few weeks. So we'll dry them off usually about two months before they're due to calf, which is normally in February and March. So we'll be drying off all our cows in, by November and they'll all be dried off by Christmas. So again, going back to this, this, this problem and issue with antimicrobial resist, resistance, it's a big word, but it's basically that our medicines mightn't work. So if any of us get sick and we, we take our medicine, it, it clears up our illness or our flu, whatever it is. But if we keep using too much medicines on our, our animals, we could be we could be in, in danger of, of, of all these bugs and, and diseases and viruses building up resistance. So we have to be very careful what, what treatments we use on our animals and only use them when necessary. So, and especially when it comes to antibiotics, we don't want to use, overuse antibiotics. So traditionally, for anyone that knows, I was from a dairy farm, you'll know that for dry cows, they, they always used to get, Every one of them just got antibiotics at drying off time, which was which wasn't really appropriate because cows might necessarily they might necessarily need it. So now we selectively just treat cows that have actually are in need of antibiotics, and the other cows don't get antibiotics. They get the sealer, which basically seals up their teeth and stops any bugs and infections getting into their teeth. So it stops them getting sick and getting a thing called mastitis during the winter. So what we're going to do this evening, we're trying out this new thing. It's a trial we're doing on the farm. It's it's basically we give the cows three tablets and it's, it's, it's been non-antibiotics. There's no antibiotics in it, but it's supposed to help boost the cow's immune system, help them fight off any diseases or any issues with mastitis. So we're hoping we won't have to use any antibiotics on those cows during the time when they're dried off and next year when they calf. So these are all new things we're trying out. They're all, I know some, some of this might sound a little bit complicated, but it, it always goes back to the issue that we're trying to, a better animal welfare, we're trying to reduce our, our antibiotics so then that we'll have loads of supply of antibiotics and, and medicines in the years to come for, for people and for humans because we have to be very careful with overuse and, and resistance. And that's going to become very important as, as time goes on. So that's kind of what's happened at the moment. So there's, there's plenty going on. Like Amy said, it's still a, it's a busy time of year, even though the springtime is our busiest time with calving. This is a busy time of the year as well. So what I'm going to show you now is, let's walk out here, the rain has kind of stopped. And I'll turn my camera around and I'll show you there's, we have, we basically have our, there's holiday makers after coming back to the farm. So these are our heifers here. So heifers are basically, they're the female cows. So they're, they're, they were born last springtime. So they're about a year and a half old now. There's more of them at the other side, but I think they're all lying in, they're all gone to bed. So they're all, just have to come back. They were on their holidays, like I was saying, up in Kilkenny, for all for during the summertime. So they went off. Even it was around the middle of March. They went off to Kilkenny, and then they came back here last week. So this this is called contract rearing. So basically, 
another farmer mines these for us and they feed them grass for the summertime. And then we look after our cows because, but firstly, we wouldn't have enough grass for them all. And then secondly, it, it frees up time as well for us during the, the summertime that we have more time to spend looking after the cows. So you can see they're all happy and they lie in. You can see one is lying down here. That's where they lie in. These are called cubicles. So they lie down there. And we keep them clean every day. We'd have to put on, it's called lime. So it keeps them all nice and disinfectant and we try and keep them dry. So they're nice and clean when they lie down and they're nice and comfortable. So they're all nice and happy in here because as much as we love to have cows at grass all year round, this time of year, it just gets too wet and there's not enough grass growth. So we have to bring animals inside. And as you can see here, what, the, what they're feeding or what they're eating, I'm sure some of you have seen this before. It's called silage. So you can see it over here as well. So if it's fishy, you can't smell it. It's a really fresh smell. It's really sweet. So basically what it is, grass is cut during the summer months and we basically bring it into these pits, which I'll, I'll show you back over here now. We bring them into pits and they're stored in there for the whole year. And then we use them in the winter time to feed the animals when we don't have much grass and, uh, and the farm. So I suppose you, you know from being at home, you don't have to, your parents don't have to cut the lawn as much because the grass isn't really growing. And, and then when the grass is not growing, we have to get the cows inside and feed them. So you can see this is what we're feeding at the moment, the silage is in here. So this is the silage pit. So we put all these, it's all put into this pit and then all the plastic is put down on top of the silage and then there's tires put on top of that. So it's all kept all tight and secure and like no, no oxygen can into that. So we want to keep air out of that basically. That's what makes it preserve. So that's basically preserve grass. That's what it is. It's just, and that's, that's a really good feed for the cows as well. So you can see there's more silage pits here. So they're all covered up. So we'll, We'll be feeding all them throughout the winter now. That's what we're going to be doing for the winter months. We're going to be feeding all this. So it looks like a lot of feed there, but you'd be surprised how much 215 cows will eat. And then there's 40 of those heifers there as well. And we also have 45 calves that were born this spring. So that's what's on the farm. And we have two bulls as well. But they eat a lot of feed. So I'll just turn my camera around again. I'll show you. There's one other thing to show you as well is um, we built new silage bits as well this year. So that was three reasons for the new silage pits. First one is those silage pits were a little bit further away from our, our shed. So we want to have them nice and close to where we're feeding. So this one is actually close where the heifers were, but we also need to be close to where our cows will be as well. So I'll show you now where the, where the cow shed is during the winter time. So that was one reason. The second reason then as well is that we were building our silage pits too, too high. So from a health and safety point of view, we didn't want our tractor driving up too high on the silage pits. So that was important that we kept them a little bit lower and then we had more, more space as well to put our silage into the, into the pits. And then the third reason as well is it's to protect water quality. So over time, the concrete all wears away, cracks can come into silage and then the silage effluent, it's called, can leak into waterways. So we want to put down new concrete just to stop that from happening. So I'll just turn my camera to show you so that's where the, the new shed is there. So the cows are spend, that's where they spend their time during the winter time. So the new silage pits are just here right beside us, behind the old silage pits. So you can kind of see the old silage pits are back there behind us, and then their new ones are here. So this will be a lot easier for us to feed silage during the winter time. We just have to, to take it out of here with our we saw when my dad was driving there with the yellow tractor that's what we use to take it out and then bring it up over here so it's a lot closer and it'll make it a lot easier and then we have another silage bit down here as well so you can see it here this one's empty this one wasn't even used this year so I suppose the last the last issue and the main reason why we built extra silage pits was because as you'll know as the weather is, is becoming a lot more extreme there's a lot more um, droughts coming during the summertime so we're so we're getting a lot more feed shortages during the summer. We won't have enough grass sometimes, and then we'd have to feed more silage. So it's important that we have an extra um, bit of silage in stock that we can feed to the cows during the winter time. Like so, there's loads of different reasons. So they were the the main reasons why we had to had to build new silage pits. So we have loads of space now for the cows. So um, that's basically kind of what's going on at the moment. 
So it's going to be like I said, over the next few months, we're going to be mainly feeding the cow silage. So it'll be like a, a bed and breakfast here, I suppose you could say. So the cows will be getting fed every day. We'll be drying off all the cows before Christmas. So we'll have a break for a month and uh, the cows will, will have a break for a month as well. And, and maybe two months, some of them as well. So it'll give us a bit of a chance to recharge the batteries and we'll be ready for the, the calving season then in the springtime. So we hope the winter won't be too long and we'll be, we'll be able to get the cows back out to grass as soon as possible because that's their natural environment. And when cows are producing milk off grass, it's a lot more nutritious. It's a better tasting type um, dairy products. And then it's also better for the environment as the cows are out in the natural environment and they're, they're not, so they're not producing as much slurry, which like I was saying, filling up our tanks and they're also not eating as much silage as well. So it's less work for us having to feed them. So that's kind of, yeah, that's kind of, I suppose, uh, the summary of what's going on at the moment. There's loads of more things I could show you, but if we had more time, but as I said, it's, it is still busy at the moment. So if any more questions, if I didn't explain anything, whether you didn't understand anything, let me know because I know that sometimes you, people don't, Maybe we take for granted some of the basic things on the farm that people mightn't understand, but feel free to ask any questions and there's no such thing as a silly question. So I'd be looking forward to hearing from you all. So thank you. Thanks a million for that, Shane. I thought that was extremely interesting. It was great to hear all about what's happening during autumn. Um, I love meeting your dogs. I think that was excellent. And hearing all about silage. Um, the comparison to a bed and breakfast was great. So instead of the cows being out eating grass all winter long, they get their food brought to them, which is a nice break. Could get breakfast in bed. Yeah, exactly. I think they, they, they're they happy anyway. I think they'd rather be inside in the warm and dry than be outside in the, the wind and the rain and said they're nice and they're nice and comfortable. So I know they're, they're happy. And then once they're happy, then the farmer is happy. Exactly. So we have loads of questions coming in here for you, Shane. Um, do you have a milking machine, excuse me? Yeah, so we do, yeah, we we have a, it's called a herringbone milking machine. So that's basically the cows come in and they stand side by side. There's 20 cows can come in at, on each side. So we can milk um, 20 cows at a time. So it takes, so it's basically 10 rows of cows, 10 and a half rows really is to get 215 cows. So usually two people milk in the milking parlor myself. And Kate normally and my dad sometimes and we have um some neighbors and down the road that will help us as well. So we milk the cows twice a day and we uh, twice a day and then we have our break, like I was saying, during the during December and, and January then. So it's it's good, but it's a good, it's a nice routine to have. We don't mind we get up early in the morning, so we start at quarter past six and we'd milk the cows. We'd normally be finished around half eight. Then by the time we have the cows in and milks and everything washed up. Go in for our breakfast then, then we come back out and whatever jobs need to be done, whether it's feeding the animals, like I was saying, it could be go off and do some fencing, it could be some power washing, we could have some machinery work to do, there's, there's loads of variety and you'd have your lunch then and, and in the afternoon you can go back out, you, you might have to do some work in the office, a lot of people don't realise there's loads of book work to do now as well and there's, there's so much variety I suppose which is great and then you have the routine of the milking again in the evening time, so we'd start around maybe half three, four o'clock and we'd be finished by half five in the evening and after that, then we normally don't do anything. We we take it easy. Then we'd um, you know, I'm involved in, in different clubs and and then we like to to you know, have our own spare time then to go off and meet friends as well and go well, for for some deep. So it's important to have the balance of of um, having a good social life as well and meeting friends and family as well. So that's kind of a routine of a normal day. But I think a lot of people a lot of people like to have have that structure as well. So that's it's a great way of life I think for someone who's farming because as I said, then I'm milking every morning with Kate and in the evening time as well. And also working with my dad. So there's not too many jobs you can work with your, with your family like that. So it's very rewarding and there's great satisfaction in it. Super, thanks Shane. Um, lots of great questions. There was a lovely question from, a, oh, I've lost it now, one second. Sorry, Percy in Newtown wants to know, how many tractors do you have? Oh yeah, so, we have, we have actually a good few tractors. We do a lot of our own machinery work. My dad actually loves machinery. I'm more interested in the cows. I love the cows and he loves machinery. So we work well together. So we have, we have two John Deere's. So you'll all know they're the green ones. Mm -hmm. And then we have the JCB, which is the tractor. We call that a loader, a telescopic loader. That's what my dad was driving past earlier on. And we also have a Renault, which is a, an orange tractor. They don't actually make them anymore. They're a class tractor now. 
And then we have a Ford. So it's a, a Ford TW10, which is a big four-wheel drive tractor. It was brought in from England back, I think, in the 1980s. My dad brought it in, but it's a really big tractor. And then he has some vintage tractors as well. He loves going off on vintage runs. So like they're tractors from back in the, the 1970s, 1980s. He has a John Deere and he has um, an International, it's called. So loads of, loads of tractors on the farm. Now we have a few questions coming in from St. Aidan's Parish School in Enniscorthy. So do you plant any crops? So we don't plant any crops. We're, we're just dairy farmers, so it's, it's nearly all grass. But there was some of you, I think we had a, a call a while ago when I was showing you this um, sward called multi-species. So even though it's not a crop, it's, it is good for the, for the soil. So it's, it has different species instead of just grass. It has things called plantain and chicory. It has different clovers in it. It has herbs. So all these things basically reduce nitrogen and fertilizer that we spread on our land. And it also is good for the soil. So they're big, long roots. Like they're good for, like I was saying, we're getting more droughts. These types of like chicories have like big, long roots that get deep into the ground. And they can they can get moisture out of the ground when when we don't have much rain, so that's something we're kind of diversifying into a bit, just to improve our environment around us and also reduce our our chemical um, nitrogen use. So we're not we're not going to plant any crops in the near future anyway. I think we leave that to the experts that that plant crops, the tillage farmers, and we'll concentrate on the producing milk, which is what we're good at doing. And and um, I suppose yeah, we we'll, that's that's the way things are gone now before. Farms were all mixed farms. Farmers might have, have had some pigs and they might have had some chickens and they might have had some beef animals and dairy and some crops. Whereas over the last few years, it's become more specialized. So farmers kind of concentrate on one thing and they become really good at that. And then they leave the experts then to concentrate on what they're good at. So I think that makes sense. I think so too. Um, that kind of leads us on to a, a nice question of, do you have a favorite type of cow? Yeah. So. Uh, you see, let's turn the camera around again. You see some of the, the heifers are out again. So they, these are the type of cow we like there, the black and white ones. So like there's a nice one here. You see the, the nice kind of speckly one. And then there's one here and then nice, she's a blackhead and she's white, a white body. So they're called Frisians. So Holstein Frisians. So they're our favorite type of cow. Some, some farmers have cows called Jerseys. Some would have more British Frisian ones, which would be more of a beefier type of a cow. But these ones are really good at producing milk. And they're really quiet and friendly, which is important. We, if we want animals that are nice and quiet. You can see I can walk up to them and they won't, so they won't run away. I like to just stand here looking at me. So, so we really like the, the Holstein Frisians. So they're, they're great for everything. They're great for milk and then they're great for animal welfare and for animal husbandry. That they're not, they're not too frightened when people are around. So that's important from a safety point of view as well. Definitely. Um... Uh, Maya, a pupil called Maya, would like to know how much milk do you get per day from your cows? Yes, that's a good question, actually. And that varies throughout the year. So, like I was saying, it's important that we're a spring calving system. So, our cows calf February or March and they milk away until November or December. So, how it works is the cows go out to grass straight away after, after calving, hopefully, so when the weather is hopefully good and there's loads of grass. So, they'll basically peak soon after calving, but eight weeks after they calf. So save the calf in February, it would normally be around April or May when they'd have their peak production. And our cows would normally peak at around, say, an average of 30 litres per day. So when you think that's a lot of milk, when you think about it, when you think of your cartons of milk at home, if you're buying a one litre carton of milk, that's 30 of those that one cow has every day. And like a two litre carton of milk, that's 15 of those. So it is a lot of milk. And, and we're not a really high intensive system. We don't put loads of feed into cows. Some farms in different parts of the country that couldn't, that can't graze grass as much. They have to feed a lot more nuts, we call them, or, or supplements or concentrates. There's loads of words. They're basically like, I suppose they're nearly like um, sweets or you call them like biscuits for the cows that it, they're really um, high in energy and like, the cows love it, but they're, they are more expensive and they're not as good for the environment because they're not as natural. So we try and focus on grass and that's how much the cows will peak then is around 30 litres. And that will gradually kind of come back to, at the moment, they're now making around 20 litres a day on average. And eventually it'll go down to 12 litres a day on average. And we'll dry them off around then. So it kind of peaks up yeah, like in May and then drops down gradually. And you try and hold the peak as long as possible. Mm -hmm. if you can throughout the summer months. And then, and most of that is produced off grass, like I was saying. And that's the key to, our whole farm, the key to it is grass. We try and grow as much grass as we can 
and try and get the cows to graze as much grass to produce high quality milk. And that's kind of sums up how we're doing here. Brilliant. Um, we maybe have time for, I think, two more short questions. Let's have a little look. Yeah. There's been, there's been lots of questions about your dogs in various types of questions. Um, yeah, Lily is still here. <laughs> one of them is, uh, what, Hi, Lily. What, Say hello. what breed are the dogs and how old are they? So yeah, the, Lily here, she's a Springer Spaniel. So she's like a real pet. She's, um, she's only basically a year. She was born in April last year. So she's only about a year and a half old. So she's still very young. So she's, um, yeah, she's really friendly, as you can see. She's just a real, she's a real pet. <laughs> she's really affectionate. She's always waiting for us every morning. We're, we go out at quarter past six every morning. She's there and she's, she's waiting for us to come out. So, um, yeah, and she's like, then Brandy, the first dog I showed you, I'm not sure if he gone back to the straw where he is, but he's a Springer Spaniel as well. So he's the same breed as Lily, but he's a lot older. He's, he's 13 years old, which is actually very old for a dog. But he's still like a he's still like a puppy as well. He's still really playful. And then other oh, Daisy is here. So there Daisy is the she's the chef dog. So she's really lazy. Oh, Brandy's up here. Look at his tie. <laughs> so he's defined the tie to play with. But look. <laughs> so they have great fun. The three are the best friends. So yeah, Brandy has. I think that's off the milking machine actually. That's <laughs> that's what he, that's just what you use to to milk the cow. It goes into a cluster. It's called. And um, I'm not sure how he's ever getting that, to be honest. <laughs> Stealing it out of somewhere. So <laughs> he always has something he's made of, whether it's a, a stone or a ball or something. He finds whatever slows him and he'll play with it. So he's great fun. And then Daisy then is our chef dog. So he's actually really lazy and quiet. She doesn't really play as much. Whereas um, Brandy and Lily are the really playful ones. But they always come down and bring the cows in with us and they go off feeding the calf with us. So they're, <laughs> so they're great fun. They're showing off now, I think. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Um, have a great life here. We'll finish off with there's lots of questions about the farm in general, but we'll just finish off on these ones maybe. So one question mm -hmm. from Kyla and Anna Scorthy is do you live close to the farm? And another question from the pupils are how long has the farm been there? So maybe if you just explain that a little bit, Shane. Yeah, so they're great questions as well. So I basically live on the farm. I can actually I can actually just walk up here now and I'll show you exactly where the house is. It couldn't be any closer. I basically walk out the door and I'm in work. So I don't have any, I have no commute to work, which is great. So straight onto the farm. And the farm has been here, say, the farm has been here for, for, I don't know how many years, for a long, long time, but I suppose it was my grandfather that moved here first from my family. So that was back, I'd say, I'd say it was probably a hundred years ago now at this stage, when he first moved here. And then my dad took it over from, from his uh, father and I'm taking it over from my dad. So been three generations of us here and then my grandfather would have farmed in a different um, part of Waterford before that as well so we've been farmers for for a long time so you can see that's where the house is over here so it's basically it's right on the yard so it couldn't be any closer so we just come out here and then we walk across into the milking parlor which is in here so it's really really close so that's really another big advantage actually of of being um being a farmer normally your your work is on your doorstep and you don't have to sit in any traffic which is great Super. Well, Shane, thank you so much for sharing your farm with us today. And everyone is just delighted with our tour. And thank you so much for answering all of those lovely questions. So for all of you in your classroom, we'll be doing another Farming Through the Seasons session in December. So you will meet Shane again, and we will talk to your teachers about the available date. So thanks a million to everyone for participating and for those brilliant questions. And we'll see you next time. So thanks, Shane. Right, thanks, everyone. See you again. Bye, everyone. Bye bye.